So you wanna add camera shake to your next video. I'm gonna show you how to do it right within Adobe Premiere Pro in this new Premiere Pro tutorial. I'm gonna show you two different styles of camera shake. One is more of this earthquake sort of dramatic effect and the other is more of a handheld look. And I'm gonna show you two ways to do that one. So first with this more earthquake stylized effect, this is created by an adjustment layer and the transform effect. So I've got this basketball clip right here and if I drag this onto my timeline, it's a pretty smooth shot. Nothing's really happening. And I've added the camera shake whenever the basketball hits the ground. So first things first, I wanna create an adjustment layer and add that to track two. So click new item and choose adjustment layer. Select okay. And then just put it on top of your video track. Now I'm gonna zoom in here and you wanna zoom in and have the adjustment layer start right when the ball is hitting the ground and then maybe go for another seven or eight frames, half a second or so. And then I'm just going to trim the end of this adjustment layer. Now adjustment layers apply whatever effect is applied to that layer to everything beneath it. And the reason we use adjustment layers is so that we can easily duplicate this camera shake effect to any clip or throughout this same clip. Go to your effects bin and type in transform it should be under your distort properties and place that on the adjustment layer. In the effects controls bin, we'll now edit this effect. Notice though, one thing is that you can't apply this sort of movement and rotation effect that we're going to do just with the basic motion properties of an adjustment layer. See if I move this around or rescale it up or down, nothing actually applies to this clip beneath it. And that's because only effects that are applied to this adjustment layer are applied to this basketball layer. And that's what this transform effect is. So if I move the position around, see how I do this? Now this video clip is moved. So the first thing I'm going to do is set a keyframe for scale at the very beginning of this clip. This is telling Premiere Pro that at this point we want the scale to be 100%. And we create a keyframe by clicking this little time watch right here. While you're at it, go ahead and create a keyframe for rotation position as well. Then up here in the effects and controls, go to the very end of this clip and then create a new keyframe for each of these properties as well with this button, add or remove keyframe. So in between here, we're going to add some changes to create this effect, but we want the beginning and end of this adjustment layer to be at the normal settings. So let's go right here in the middle and we're gonna do sort of like a zoom in, zoom out, and then rotate in, rotate out. So let's scale it up to 115. And you'll notice that when I put my timeline indicator right here in the middle, and then I type in a new number for scale, it adds a keyframe. Same for rotation, let's go to two. So you can see this starting to work that it zooms in and then out, zooms in and out. Now let's just add some position animation. And this is just going to be moving it down, moving it around. This is just trying to make it feel a little bit more organic. So maybe five or six keyframes in the middle here, you might wanna play around and that's pretty good. So let's play through it. Nice. So you could go in and tweak those to see if you want more or less shake. The other thing I did with this original version was I added a subtle bit of blur to it. And that was with the directional blur. So type in directional, direct, and you'll see that the directional blur pops up. We're gonna apply it to the adjustment layer. Again, we're going to set keyframes at the beginning and end at zero and zero and then go to the end and apply these keyframes as well. And then in the middle, we're going to create our blur. So first I'm going to increase the blur length just so I can see what it's gonna look like and then adjust the direction to something like 77 degrees or something. And then I'm gonna bring back my blur length to 15. Again, it depends on how dramatic you wanna be. Pretty cool, huh? Neat. So now the beauty of this is we can just go to the next spot where the ball bounces right there and then copy and paste this adjustment layer or simply hold the option key down and drag this clip 
That's on a Mac. On a PC, it would be, con I believe, Alt clicking and dragging. And we can just duplicate this camera shake over and over. Boom, boom, boom. Cool, huh? Awesome. So that's more of that earthquake style. Let's look at the handheld style. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. One is basically the same thing with the adjustment layer. So I'm actually not going to walk through this entire sequence of what I did. But you can see here that I've added this adjustment layer. I've added the transform property. And I've added position, scale, and rotation keyframes. The key is to be subtle. So here you can see that there's just this subtle movement. It's not like in the earthquake one. And it's very, very minimal adjustments to all of these different properties. So that's one way you can sort of custom manually do it. But there's an easier and more organic way to do it that I got from my buddy Kurt Anderson over at Adobe Masters. So what we're going to need is a stable shot that we want to add motion to, which is this street shot. So I'm just going to duplicate this over here. See how there's no motion at all. And then I'm going to need a shot that has motion. So you do need that separate shot. I can use this basketball shot and I'm just going to place it above this clip and I'm going to just make it the same length as that clip. So see how this basketball shot has movement, the camera movement already. I'm basically going to use the warp stabilizer effect and reverse engineer it. So it's applying the movement that's being removed from this shot to this shot. Okay, I know that's a little confusing, but let's just show you how to do it. So if we go to our effects, type in warp, we find warp stabilizer, put this on top of the basketball clip. And now it's going to analyze it and then we're going to change some settings. So we actually wanna change the method here from subspace warp to position. You can also try position, scale, and rotation, but I found that position seems to work best for this handheld motion style. For framing, we're going to leave at stabilize, crop, and auto scale. And then smoothness, this will actually increase or decrease the amount of shake you have. So the more smoothness, the smoother your footage is on this clip, the shakier it's going to be on the street clip that I'm adding camera shake to. So now if I play through this, while there's still movement, it tries to do a little bit of stabilizing. It doesn't matter if there's a, if it's stable or not, because what I'm going to do is actually copy this warp stabilizer effect, selecting it, Command C on a Mac, that'd be Control C on a PC. I'm gonna move that basketball clip. Now notice what happens. I play this clip, nothing's happening. If I select this clip and then paste the warp stabilizer effect, notice how there is now movement so you get this more organic, natural movement. So if that's a little bit too much movement, we can go in here. Let's drop this down to like something like 10%. Copy this again. Go to this other clip. Whoops, not delete the clip, but delete the effect. And then paste it. So now you see that's a little bit less of hand movement. Now this organic movement is going to depend on what clip we are using to add the warp stabilizer to. So you can use different clips to get different kinds of handheld movement. But again, this is a quick way to create that organic handheld motion without having to go through and manually keyframe it yourself. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the comments. And if you're looking to take your skills to the next level, make sure you head over to videoschoolonline.com where we have premium courses, more free tutorials and articles, guides, and all kinds of stuff that will help you become a better creator. Thanks so much for watching and have a beautiful day.